Queen Rian Alphaeus, this is Nanny Suzanne, and it's bedtime reading. And tonight we're going to learn about six more fascinating animals. Look at that. See that? Those are animals with peculiar protection. You know what that means? They have a kind of a protection that is very odd and different and very special. So we're going to find out first about the striped skunk. The striped skunk, did you know, sprays its enemies with a smelly liquid when threatened. First, it turns its back. Then, it raises its bushy tail. Then, it stomps its feet. Then, it growls. And if you haven't figured out by then that you should be running really fast in the other direction, then it's going to spray you. And the skunk squirts a terrible smelling liquid from two openings under its tail. That's why it lifts its tail. It can even hit an animal that is 12 to 15 feet long. So if you were standing against your wall in your living room and the skunk was against your window and it lifted its tail and sprayed you, it would hit you. Did you know that? Also, it likes the nighttime. It doesn't like people, so it stays hidden and it sleeps in a barn or somewhere in a ditch during the day and then at night it comes out and if you put your garbage out and you had like chicken bones or something, oh, it loves meat and it loves vegetables. So if you have a vegetable garden, it might go and start yanking your carrots and tong, 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 just like a rabbit and it'll eat your vegetables. So that's what skunks are like. Also, did you know that if a snake bit a skunk, if, it, if a snake bit you and it was poisonous, it might kill you, but not a skunk. A skunk can't die from a snake bite. Very interesting. Do you also know if you got sprayed from a, by a skunk, what would you need to do to get that smell off? Because it's the worst smell and you can't get rid of it. Well, when Nanny was young, she heard about this, and I'm sure her grandma and grandpa were young, and Nana and Grandma Gigi, they would take a bath in tomato juice. Isn't that funny? And took more than one can, probably took two, and I'd say even three, and maybe even four. Now, if it was you taking a bath, four cans would be enough. But if it was Nanny that got sprayed and I had to sit in the bath, I'd need a hundred cans of tomato juice. Absolutely. So, let me... Uh, oh, there is a video. So, you ask Mommy, Nanny sent this to you because she laughed so hard when she saw the video. So, you ask Mommy after this to show you the video about the skunk that farts. It's so funny. Funny, you're going to laugh so much. So the next animal is the porcupine. And it says, did you know that the porcupine also turns their back when attacked? A porcupine's upper side is covered with barbed quills. If an enemy comes too close, the porcupine raises its quills and lashes its tail. If the attacker even touches them, then the quills pop out and they project into person's face or their body and it's very painful and very difficult to remove so it happens sometimes with dogs or cats that get very curious and close to a porcupine and the quills come out oh, and then they have to go to the veterinarian they try and pull them out oh this is so sad did you know that nanny had earrings that were quills before long time ago do you know who bought them for her it was opa and they were beautiful I don't know where they are now, but I had them a long time ago. So I want to show you a picture of a porcupine. Look at this one. Look at that porcupine. Isn't that funny looking? And then the next one, say peekaboo. There he is. Isn't he funny? He looks like he got a haircut because his quills are smaller. So he must be a baby one. But you ask mommy for that video. So the next one is, did you know that the opossum here, it protects itself by rolling over and playing dead. Its tongue hangs out and, and its eyes look glassy. As soon as the danger is over, the play acting opossum comes back to life. Let me show you a picture of one. 
before I tell you a funny story. Look at this. Oh, can you see it? Let me see if I can get, there you go, close enough. Well, I gotta tell you a funny story because Nanny and Grampy used to go down to Florida. They had a house there. And then early in the morning, Nanny would get up and she'd go for a long walk on a country road. And one morning, she had her phone with her. And one morning, she's walking around. And all of a sudden, she spots something over there on the road. And as I get closer, it's an opossum laying on the road with its eyes glossy and its, its tongue hanging out. And I'm just like, ugh, that is so scary and ugly. But I took my phone and I went up and I took a picture real quick and then I ran away. I figured it was dead, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was play acting because it saw me coming and it laid on the ground like that. Oh my goodness. I'm glad I didn't know that back then because Nanny would have run so fast. Not funny. All right, did you know that the fairy or three-banded armadillo travels in its own suit of armor? Its back, side, head, and tail are all covered with bony plates. If an enemy attacks, the armadillo can just roll up into a little ball. And I have another story about Florida. Grammy, Grampy and Nana and Nanny were in Florida and I was sleeping. I'd been asleep for a while and Grampy came out and he, and he woke me up and he said, come outside and see. And I went out and there were two baby armadillos playing, probably a brother and a sister, just like you, Winry, and Alphaeus, that you play together in the living room. Well, these two armadillos were just play fighting like that. And they would roll up in a ball and roll on top of each other. It was so cute to look at. So armadillos can be cute and fun. And I showed you the picture. I showed you the picture, yes. Okay, the next one. Did you know that the octopus carries its own hiding place with it? When threatened by ocean-dwelling enemies, it simply squirts out a cloud of ink-like fluid, just like this, and it hides the octopus completely. And the octopus also has the ability within a second to change color so that it blends in its background. So if Nanny went and stood against that yellow wall and a predator, somebody was coming or an animal was coming that was gonna hurt me, like that, I would turn completely yellow. So you wouldn't even see me. I'd be against the yellow wall and you wouldn't even spot me. That's what an octopus can do. Isn't that fascinating? It has eight arms. And I want to show you some pictures. Now you make sure also Nanny found a, a little video of an, an octopus, a small octopus trying to make a house out of a shell and it's the cutest thing. So you make sure you ask mommy. Now look at this octopus. Wow. Isn't that fascinating? Look at this one. Look, there's somebody there standing. That's the size of the octopus. And look how beautiful this one is. Look at that color. Wow, color's beautiful. The octopus, yeah. So, make sure to ask for those videos. The last one is, did you know that an electric eel carries its own supply of electricity? <gasps> rows and rows of small natural battery cells inside its body can produce enough electricity to kill a person or at least some, some animal that wants to harm it. This amazing fish could supply enough current to turn on a TV, to charge your iPad, to, to, uh, to work a hair dryer, and a couple of light bulbs. But they wouldn't run very long. But isn't that fascinating? That is. Now, the electric eel also has to come to the surface to breathe, and it can be eight feet long. So Daddy is 6'6", six, six, so another foot and a half taller than Daddy. And you know Nanny ate eel a long time ago. I was with my friend. I went to her place, and their family from far, far away in Holland, across the ocean, sent them eel, and they said, would you like some? And I said, sure. And they opened up the package, and it was raw. It wasn't even cooked. I think that's the last time I ate eel, but I ate it, so I'm kind of brave. 
Now, I was thinking there are two famous electric eels that you know of because you watched the movie The Little Mermaid. Remember Urs Ursula's eels, Flotsam and Jetsam? They were very nice. So those are famous eels that you know about. So that's my story tonight. And uh, oh, let's see tomorrow night. It's a story. Now you told me today, you said, I have to tell you something, Nanny. The story, it was boring. So you like to learn about animals. So if I'm telling you a story, you don't like it. Uh, here's two stories in a row. One of them is about a whole bunch of monkeys and bananas, but you don't like a story. So the next one would be about the animals in the Arctic, the birds and the animals. That'll be fascinating. So, Nanny, so excited that you had a great time at the ranch and that you're back in Winry. I hope you had a lot of fun with Daddy tonight, today on the road trip to Gravelburg and you saw Grandma Dawn again. And um, thank you for FaceTime today. It was so much fun and um, uh, it was so fun to see you because you know that Nanny and Grampy and Uncle Michael and Opa and Namir and Nana, we miss you so much. We miss holding you and we miss kissing you, your face and laughing with you and giggling and playing with you. So I'm glad I get to do these videos to talk to you and I'm glad we have FaceTime so we can see each other at least on, on the laptop. So have a good night's sleep and thank you for praying with me for Nana the other day because she's doing much better. She's still not feeling great but she was feeling horrible before so she's feeling better. So tonight we pray as you go to sleep, Lord, that you watch over Monty in the crib and Alphaeus in the bottom bunk and Winry on the top bunk, and that they have a good night's sleep. And we pray that you watch over them, your angels watch over them. We pray that Monty have a good night's sleep, that he only wakes up to eat and have his diaper change and then quickly goes back to sleep. So mommy can get some quality rest tonight and daddy too. And we pray you watch over Nana and keep her and keep healing her face and that the swelling keeps going down and that uh, her stomach feels better and she feels so much better so very soon, Lord. And so have a great day tomorrow. It's Saturday. Nanny loves Saturdays. And tomorrow it's supposed to rain a bit, but then I'll be working in the flower garden and Hunter will be outside with me and I'm really looking forward to it. So all these Nanny kisses for you. For Monty, for Alphaeus, for Winry, and uh, can't wait to see you tomorrow. Love you.